Hi, I'm Sandy Hockenberry. And I'm Susan Nolan. And we're the co-authors of Psychology 7th Edition. Susan came to my attention as a co-author in a couple of stats books, and I was really impressed by the creativity and the readability and the writing style, and she really knows how to engage students. And as you know, those are hallmarks of the Hockenberry textbook, to be engaging, relevant, and really draw students into the narrative. Her background, also her research background in cultural studies, globalization, women in STEM fields, and clinical psychology was very appealing. In 2005, I was uh, heading off to Bosnia to go on sabbatical for a year, and I was going to be writing a stats textbook, and I wanted to bring a, a few books with me, and I had very little room in my luggage. But one of the books that I chose to bring was Hockenberry. I had always loved it. I love the narrative style, the storytelling style. It was something I wanted to emulate in my own writing. The really um, great, engaging, everyday examples. It's written so clearly and understandably. And perhaps most important, it has a really strong emphasis on science. So I was so thrilled when I got the opportunity to actually be a part of the book. Scientific literacy has always been a key feature of this book. To see the difference between science and pseudoscience and tackling psychological myths. But in the seventh edition, we've built upon it, we've expanded on it, we've pointed it out. And just a few examples are the myth versus science questions and the new think like a scientist model that we introduce in the first chapter. In the classroom, I want to give them the tools to think critically about this information and, and to think like a psychological scientist about all of this information that they're seeing all the time. It's been really fun to work on the Think Like a Scientist feature with Sandy. Um, one of the things I love about it is it enables me to take the things that I do in the Intro to Psych classroom that, that come from all the statistics and research methods classes I've taught and the research I've done. I bring those into the classroom with my intro students all the time. And this is a chance to then translate them into an interactive feature that students who are reading the textbook can use as they go along. This feature really emphasizes critical thinking and scientific literacy. And one of the things I tell my intro to psych students all the time is if you leave with nothing else, I want you to be a really good consumer of information. When you read something out there in the world when you leave here, I want you to be able to evaluate the source and I want you to be able to think about the science that you're reading about critically. Anyone who teaches introductory psychology knows what a challenge it is to teach that introductory chapter. The research methods section especially is very important but can be very daunting to students because it can be very abstract and dry. So my brainstorm was to use student-focused examples, uh, research studies about student life and student success uh, to illustrate each of the different research strategies. So just for example, in the chapter application, at the end of the chapter, we focus it on research-based uh, study skills tips. Uh, for example, it turns out that taking notes by hand is much more effective than taking notes on your keyboard. You're much more likely to remember what you've heard if you hand write it out versus type it out. I'm really excited about this because I feel that it, it achieves three key goals. First, it illustrates how psychological research is actually conducted. Second, it shows students right from the very first class how psychological research can be used to improve their lives, how it's relevant to their lives. And third, it's really news they can use. These, this is all information that they can use, not just in introductory psychology, but in all of their classes. I've always loved the Hockenberry book for its personal stories. I had the opportunity to meet a wonderful young man named James um, who lives in upstate New York and I got a chance to get to know him and his story. Um, James is transgender and um, his experiences with being transgender um, are a wonderful opportunity to connect with the material in the book on gender roles, James's own experience. So it's been just really rewarding to be able to tell a story myself. A year ago, um, I went back to Nepal with a volunteer group. We trekked to an incredibly remote region of the Himalayas, um, bringing, uh, holding medical clinics in the villages along the way. So I thought it would be the perfect prologue for the chapter on motivation and emotion. We really want students to come away being able to be critical consumers of the information that they encounter in the world around them. And I want them to be more aware of their own biases, their own behavior. Students today have access to so much more information than they had in the past. It used to be they had the textbook. Um, and they could go to the library, but now they can go online and get access to everything. And so much of it is related to psychological science. And I want to give students the tools to be able to think critically about the information that they're seeing and to think like a psychological scientist so that they're, they're 
making good decisions in their own lives.